السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وكشف الله عز وجل به الغمة حتى تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أما بعد dear brothers and the sisters Unfortunately, it's almost a hundred days and we are still watching the massacring and the slaughtering of our brothers and the sisters in Palestine. And I cannot actually come to this place without talking about this topic. It's a very hot topic nowadays. But if we do not talk about it, who is going to talk about that? If we cannot raise the awareness with everything related to what's going on in Palestine nowadays, what else shall we say, shall we do? We have reached almost the number of 23,000 people, victims of the Palestinian people, as for today, they were all killed for no reason, for no guilt, except they are the owners of the land and except they are the Muslims on the land of Palestine, of Palestine. Watching this conspiracy from the Christian world with the Jewish world against our brothers and the sisters in Palestine, it reminds me to talk and raise that discussion today about when Muslims ruled, when Muslims ruled, specifically in Palestine, in Jerusalem, what was the situation? Did we do the same thing? Did we oppress the Jews or the Christians or even the disbelievers? This is the topic I want to explore very quickly today. When Muslim ruled, specifically Jerusalem. But before seeing that, I want to remind you I was here in front of you three weeks or four weeks ago and I said, we have to trust Allah, if you remember that. And I was given the good news saying, victory is coming soon, inshallah. Our brothers and the sisters in Palestine are going to triumph soon. And before starting the topic of the khutbah today, I want to confirm this and repeat it again. We are waiting for that victory to descend on them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone is going to say, oh brother, we have been saying that for the last three months, I want to remind you, it's usually in our culture, in our belief that the darkest moment of the night is the moment before the Fajr emerges, before the Subh, the morning rises. This is the darkest point of the night. With all these casualties, inshallah, we are getting closer and closer from Allah's victory. And I want to remind you of something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us and the Jews before us about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Allah said, 
We have written in the Psalms, as Zabur, the Psalms, is the revelation to Dawood, David, alayhi salam. After the scripture, most likely that was given to Moses after the Torah, Allah has written in the Psalms to them before us, to the Jews before the Muslims, that the righteous people, the righteous believers, the servants of Allah are those who, who are going to inherit the earth. And inshallah, we believe in our brothers and the sisters in Palestine who is fighting right now, inshallah, they are the righteous people. And we believe, inshallah, Allah is going to grant them this victory. And we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make his promise to happen soon and relieve their pains, inshallah. And I want to remind you, before starting, talking about the topic of this khutbah today again, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and I said it in that previous khutbah, وَلَقَدْ سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ Our word has been already sent to our servants, the messengers. إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْصُورُونَ They are indeed going to gain the victory. وَإِنَّا and our soldiers will be the one who gained the victory. Saying that, I want to move very quickly to the topic. When Muslim ruled, what happened? I'm not going to talk about when Muslim ruled the entire world. I'm going to talk about when Muslim ruled Jerusalem. When it was Jerusalem in the year 15th, of Hijra, what happened? It was the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab when the soldiers, the army of the Muslim people went to open Jerusalem. They besieged the city. But I want to remind you before saying anything, the city at that time and for the last 500 years before the year 15 of the Hijra was not inhabited by the Jews. There was, there was no one person, no single Jew in Jerusalem for 500 years. When Al-Fatih al-Islami, when the Muslims conquested Jerusalem, it was occupied by the Christians. What did they do? The Romans, they prevented the Christians that followed the Eastern Church to practice their Christianity. They prevented the Jews to enter the city. The Catholic Roman or Romans who were ruling at that time slaughtered 20,000 Jews when they entered Jerusalem. This is what they did. And this is why, as soon as the troops of the Muslim army arrived, the patriarch, who was in charge of Jerusalem, decided immediately to surrender the city without fighting. He called the Muslim army leaders and he said, I'm going to give it over to you. I'm going to give the keys of Baytul Maqdis to you. Come and have it. There is a narration that says there were three leaders at that time of the army. The prominent leaders, Amr ibn al-As, Shurahbil ibn Hasana, and there was also among them, Khalid ibn al-Walid of course was there, but Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah was the main person at that time. And there is a narration that says when they came to take the keys of the gates of Baytul Maqdis of Al-Quds, that patriarch refused to give it to them. He said, the person that who should take the keys of the Al-Quds is not, doesn't look like you. You are none that the people described in our books. This is a narration. It's not fully authenticated, but it came in history. So, they sent to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an to come, to come from Medina to take, to receive the keys of Al-Quds. 
And we all know that story. Umar ibn al-Khattab came with his servant, with his ghulam, riding the same camel. Umar is taking turns with the servant on the camel. And for the third turn, they both walk, leaving the camel walking. And Umar ibn al-Khattab arrived to the army of the believer in front of the gates of Al-Bayt al-Maqdis. And they told him, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, as it was narrated, he said to him, Amir al muminin you are coming to those people. They, they are kings. They are very interested in the appearance. They are living a kind of very lavish lifestyle. Would you please change your clothes? In the narration, they said Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an was wearing that garment that has 17 patches. And he is going to meet the patriarch. The patriarch at that time, as related in history, not in Islamic history, he was meeting Umar ibn al-Khattab with tassels of gold. He was dressed with real gold. He was carried by people while he is meeting the caliph, the president, the president of the biggest empire, empire, Muslim empire, that defeated Persian and Romans at the same time. He was leading the camel while his servant was riding. So, Umar ibn al-Khattab responded saying to Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, لو أن غيرك قالها يا أبا عبيدة لعلوته بالدرة. If someone else other than you have given me this advice, I would have hit him on his head with this whip I have. You know, Umar ibn al-Khattab used to have this stick in his hands. And he went with the garment with 17 patches. And it was the turn to his servant to ride, and he was guiding the camel when it was when they were in front of the gates of Al-Quds. And the patriarch came to ask, where is the caliph? Ain al-Khalifa? Asking the man who is riding. So he nodded to him, he is the caliph. The one who is guiding the camel for the servant. He asked, Ain al-Khalifa? He said, I'm the caliph. And Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he came to give him the keys. So they wanted to come to an agreement, and this is very specifically about the topic. What was the, the treaty between Umar ibn al Khattab? The patriarch told him, Let's come to an agreement. To surrender, we have to agree. What are we going to have from you? We're going to give you the keys of the city for no fight, for, for no kind of any objection. So what are you going to give us? What do you need? He is the winner. When we win, we did that. He said to him, nothing. Just leave the Romans, politicians, the leaders of the, of the Roman army, the leaders of the Roman people to leave Jerusalem. Where? To go anywhere. So you are not going to capture them? No. Are you going to take their money, their treasures? Abu al said, no. They can carry with them whatever they can carry. All the treasures they can have. But just leave the city, that's it. Those warriors, those politicians, take everything and go. The patriarch, he said, oh, but if we do that, if we are the Romans, have victory in a city like this, we in this life segment of people, we burn in the city, we rape women, we do all of that. So you are not going to do anything like this? He said, no. He said, so you are going to seize the property of the people? He said, no. Everyone is going to keep his own property. No properties are going to be seized or taken from their owners. What about our churches? The Romans themselves, as I said, did not allow the, the Christians that followed the Eastern 
church practiced the religion at that time. Omar ibn al-Khattab said to him, we will never destroy a church. We will never break a cross. Your crosses are there. What we call now in the United States, and we say we are the leaders of freedom. Because of what? Because of religious freedom. That reminds me of that great poet, al Hizbis, when he said this verse of poem saying, Malakna fakana al minna sajiyatan. We owned, when we ruled, we applied justice and forgiveness was one of our main key characters. We have never oppressed when we ruled, when we gained the victory, when we have power in everyone, on top of everyone. Forgiveness was our trait. فَلَمَّا مَلَكْتُمْ When you own, when you rolled, when you get the power on top of us as Muslims, what happened? Sala biddami abtahu. The bloodshed was spread everywhere. No place when they slaughtered the Muslims during the Crusades. 90,000 Muslims has been slaughtered. Not just by mass weapons we witness nowadays. Imagine when you slaughter that number of people with the swords. They were bragging for how their horses got blood to what height, to what level in the legs of the horses. Muslims, when they ruled, they didn't do that. When we won, when Umar ibn al-Khattab entered the city, he is the emperor of the biggest empire of the world at that time. The patriarch asked him, would you please come and pray your prayers as a Muslim next to me in the church? What did Umar ibn al-Khattab say? He said, no. He refused. The man asked him, why? You are gonna get you are gonna pray your prayers as a Muslim and I'm gonna pray beside you as a Christian. He said, No, if I do so, the Muslim people may come and think that church is for them. They can't take it from you. And he prayed outside in Al Masjid al Aqsa. This is when Muslim when, when Muslims win, they were showing that great civilization of Islam. Give me any kind of civil civilization in the world that is doing the same thing like this. The civilized world is watching the massacres that's happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. If they don't encourage, they cannot say no. But when we owned, when we ruled, and the poet said, this is what happened. We are talking about the temple of Solomon. And we have been talking about this every Monday in the Khatra after Aisha for seven weeks now. And we are continuing. But a part of that, when we are talking about this, is Umar ibn al-Khattab asked about the temple, the place of the temple, we said it was under the Christian ruling for the last 500 years after the second destruction of the temple. So, what happened? Umar ibn al-Khattab asked, where is that temple? Where is the place of that temple? And the man, the patriarch, pointed to the place and imagine what was it? When the Christians took over the city of Jerusalem, they made the place of that temple the garbage dump. 
the garbage dump. The place where we are talking about, it was one day built by Sulaiman alayhi salam. It was the garbage dump for 500 years. And the patriarch already have witnessed so that Omar ibn al-Khattab came down on his knees trying to clean the garbage. How dare you? There was, there, is, there was no temple. It was completely destroyed. The temple that, destroy, that was made by Sulaiman even was completely destroyed 700 years before that. But this is the place. Umar ibn al-Khattab and the Muslim people realized that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their prophet, the messenger of Allah Muhammad, when he went on the day of al-Isra and during the journey of al-Isra and al-Mi'raj, he led the prophets in this place. So imagine if you go to al-Masjid al-Aqsa and put this in your mind. If you prostrate, make sujood or ruku' in any place, you can imagine that this place one day witnessed one of the prophets were praying here one day and they were led by your prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the prophets since Adam until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we are talking about almost 100 to 24,000 prophets and the messengers led by prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They prayed jama'ah in the masjid al-Aqsa. But this is when we ruled. It was like this. Dear brothers and sisters, I say that, that we feel proud. I say that, that we are sure, inshallah, if we keep on the same level of belief and righteousness, Allah is going to give us victory as it was given to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, and the companions. And after that, as we usually say in Arabic, وَفِي اللَّيْلَةِ الظَّلْمَاءِ يُفْتَقَدُ الْبَدْرُ in a very dark night, the full moon is going to be really missed. When he freed Jerusalem and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa for the second time from the Crusaders. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters والله there are a lot to say but we don't have time to say anything I just give you an idea about the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab and this is the very, the, the very first moment of the Muslims ruling the city not, not that far. It was the same when Salahuddin al Ayyubi entered. But I want to say something that you cannot find. It's left out of the books of history, especially for our young people. One of the questions Omar ibn al Khattab asked the patriarch, Sophronius, his name was Sophronius, and he asked him, Where are the Jews? He said, What? Is there any Jew in the city of Jerusalem? said, there is no one Jew. Whenever we found someone, we kept killing him or her. There is no tolerance about that for the last 500 years. And it was said that Omar ibn al-Khattab asked one of the convert Muslims who, who was a Jew, if he knows any of the Jew, Jewish family that they can come and live in Jerusalem. Not in the same places of the uh, Romans, but in Jerusalem. This is when we, the Muslims, ruled. Very recent, if you think that was only at the time of Omar al-Khattab or Salahuddin, very recently, when it was the Ottoman Empire, when we lost Al-Andalus, the Jews were oppressed, were killed, were slaughtered in Spain. The only place that gave them sanctuary is the Ottoman Empire, the Muslim countries. The European countries blocked their ways to enter any of their countries. They found sanctuary, they found safety. Only just recently, 
And even at the time of Sultan Abdul Hamid al-Thani, when we were or when the Ottoman Empire at the, the weakest point of its history, and when the Nazis were oppressing the Jews, the only place that protected the Jews were the Muslim countries under the ruling of the Ottoman Empire. There are a lot to say, brothers and sisters, but I want to finish very quickly because of the interest of time, and I will read just three or four lines of the treaty that Omar ibn al-Khattab, I'm reading it, gave it. I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to just read three, four, five lines to you. The treaty said that. It's, a, it's a very known. That pact is very known. The covenant of Omar ibn al-Khattab, means to that Roman people, to that patriarch. He said in that covenant, in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, this is the assurance of safety, which the servant of God, Omar, the commander of the faithful, has given to the people of Jerusalem, the Christian people. He has given them an assurance of safety for themselves, for their property, their churches, their crosses, the sick and healthy of the city, and for all the rituals which belong to their religion. Their churches will not be inhabited by Muslims and they will not be destroyed. Neither they, nor the land on which they stand, nor their cross, nor their property will be damaged. They will not be forcibly converted. The people of Jerusalem must pay the taxes like the people of other cities and must expel the Byzantines and the robbers. This is just a part of the covenant of Omar ibn al-Khattab. Tell me in history who made something like this. And it was not just a treaty to be hanged on the walls. It was, it was the treaty that has been coming to effect, to action before it was written. This is what we have in the history. Tell our children, there are many things they cannot read it in the books of the history. They took it out of the books of history intentionally, but unfortunately, it is still there. They cannot deny that. This is what I said in the beginning. When Muslim ruled, specifically in Jerusalem, A lot of the history about Palestine, 8,000 years BCE, we are explaining every Monday here. And our brothers still in me now to remind you, these sessions are all on YouTube. If someone would like to even go through that and watch it. Brother has been telling me and I couldn't understand, but now I, I remember. So he is telling you that there are many things on our YouTube channel, if you please. Mass Katie YouTube, if you please access that channel and you will see a lot of information there. Allahumma ansur ikhwanana fi Filistina ya Rabbal Alameen. Allahumma ansurhum nasran azizan muazzaran ya akram al-akramin. Allahumma ya Rabbal Alameen wa ya arham al-rahimin ya hannan ya mannan ya dal jalali wal ikram. Ihkun dimaahum ya Rabbana. اللهم احكم دماءهم يا ربنا اللهم لا تسؤنا فيهم أكثر من هذا وأنت الكريم اللهم ارحمنا وارحمهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ارحمنا وارحمهم برحمتك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم يا ربنا يا أكرم الأكرمين مكن لهم في الأرض بحولك وقوتك يا رب العالمين اللهم مدهم بجندك يا من لا يعلم جندك إلا أنت يا ربنا هم المستضعفون وأنت القوي العزيز لا يهزمون وأنت وليهم يا رب العالمين اللهم لا يهزمون وأنت وليهم يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم لا يضامون وأنت القوي العزيز الحكيم اللهم يا ربنا خذلناهم ولم يبق لهم إلا أنت ليس لهم إلا أنت وأنت أكرم الأكرمين فمن عليهم برحمة منك يا رب العالمين اللهم اهزم أعداءهم يا ربنا اللهم اهزم أعداءهم واهزم من, من عاون أعداءهم وكل لهم ناصرا, ناصرا ومعينا يا رب العالمين اللهم كل إخواننا في فلسطين ناصرا ومعينا ولا تكن لغيرهم يا رب العالمين أنت الكريم أنت الكريم أنت الكريم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي 
النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك أعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن للمتقين مفازا حدائق وأعنابا وكواعب أترابا وكأسا دهاقا لا يذوكون وكأسا دهاقا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا جزاء من ربك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفا لا يتكلمون لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه مآبا إنا أنذرناكم عذابا قريبا يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقول الكافر يا ليتني كنت ترابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين كلا إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا وجيء يومئذ بجهنم يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وأنا 
له الذكرى يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي فيومئذ لا يعذب عذابه أحد ولا يوثق وثاقه أحد يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله